When assessing a system to attack, a hacker is usually looking to find vulnerabilities. The first step of doing so is usually recon, but with a couple scripts, MAP can actually go offensive and show you various critical vulnerabilities it discovers. We'll show you how this works on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Hackers or penetration testers going after a network will often work in a couple phases to identify the weakest link. Now one of the best tools for doing this is Nmap, which allows you to scan a network and identify different hosts on it, as well as different services they might be running. Now you can also take advantage of some really interesting features of Nmap that might not be commonly known by a lot of users, and in this case we're going to explore scripts. Now what a script does is allow you to use various outputs from Nmap to determine things like whether or not there's a vulnerability in that service that you've discovered. Now we can find this in the CVE report, or a critical vulnerability report, that was logged when the vulnerability was originally discovered, and look to see if maybe someone has weaponized a tool that allows us to take advantage of this exploit. Now, in order to do this, we'll need to have Nmap installed, and you'll need to be running this on Kali Linux or another system that's easy to install things like GitHub repositories, because we'll also need to make this executable in order for it to work. Once you have Nmap installed and your system is fully updated, then we can begin. Now, to get started understanding how to use Nmap scripts, we're going to pick a couple that are particularly useful for an attacker. First, we're going to use nmap vulnerse, and second, we're going to use volscan. Oops. So these are two really effective scripts that Tokyo Neon wrote about in his excellent guide, which we will be following along with for this tutorial. Now, another really interesting thing about these is they do not require very much configuration at all. We can just go ahead and download them with a git clone command after we click on the link here and then copy this link from each into a terminal window. Just type git clone, and then the address for each here. Now, make sure you type cd first, because if you're in some wacky directory, then you might accidentally clone it there. And basically, as soon as it's in the directory it's supposed to be in, then Nmap will know exactly where to find it. And when you use the command, it will just go and search through the directory there to see if it matches any of the output you're getting from your Nmap scan. So let's go ahead and do a scan and see what it looks like. This is the command to use a script in Nmap. We'll be using a damn vulnerable Raspberry Pi, which we covered in a previous guide. And this is at IP address 192.168.033. So we're going to be doing a service scan, so we should get the version of the services that are running on this Raspberry Pi. And we're also going to say script, uh, volscan, and then vulners. So before we do that, I'm actually gonna delete this portion, and I wanna see the difference between what we've already learned and then what we're going to be doing today. If we just do this scan with what we've learned up until this point, while we do get a good overall picture of what's running on the device, we really have no idea as to whether or not it's vulnerable or if it's been updated recently or what's going on. We would have to go and compare it to the most recent version, see how far along this protocol is, and it could take quite some time to realize, hey, this is old, it might be worth looking up whether or not this is vulnerable. Uh, so if we're looking for the weakest link here, this doesn't really give me enough information to be super useful. But let's take a look at, at uh, what comes up when we do the complete command here. So really what I want is an indication of what to attack first. What's the most vulnerable? What's the most out of date? I really don't get much of an indication from these two services that come up uh, what I might want to attack as a red teamer or a hacker with uh, the initial output. So, whoa, this is a lot more. Even though we only have two different services we're scanning, we can see this tiny little report before is dwarfed by everything that we have here. So we, in particular, are getting a lot of information from Vulners, which has a really comprehensive database of different vulnerabilities that have been documented and rated by severity. So we can see uh, some 5.0 vulnerabilities here. And then further down, some more interesting 7.5, and 
And this is where we really start getting into stuff that could be more damaging and maybe get us remote access on a system or cause it to not function at all. So if I'm an attacker, then I know exactly what I'm doing at this point. I'm gonna focus on the most serious vulnerabilities and I can click on these links to learn more about what uh, the vulnerability is and what I can do to take the next step in attacking the target. So here we can see a excellent little description. We can see um, on made dereference and null point uh, during an API. Hmm, well, that seems like something you probably shouldn't be able to do. But there's also another one I found earlier, which is a little bit more clear and actually just causes a denial of service attack against the open SSH server. Now that's really interesting. And I wanted to click around and see if this has been developed into a proof of concept. And I was actually able to find a couple different uh, proof of concepts for vulnerabilities on the network I was scanning. In particular, I found this mini UPnP server uh, vulnerability which actually did have a proof of concept in Python, taking advantage of the attack that had been found. It was pretty cool to find a actual proof of concept that had been developed for a vulnerability I found using this Nmap scan on the first try. So I encourage you to test this out on your own network and just run a scan with the intention of looking up the vulnerabilities and seeing if it's something that's serious enough to mitigate patching. Now, of course, if you own this device, then the best thing to do would be to update the firmware as much as you can. Although on older devices, it may be dependent on services which will never be updated as a lot of abandoned IoT devices or things that just aren't gonna be updated anymore end up being relegated to. Since nobody's taking care of their firmware, a lot of these things might be permanently vulnerable. So this is a great way of testing devices in your environment to see if maybe they have one of these 7.5 or above vulnerabilities that's actually worth taking care of. After a hacker finds a vulnerability on a system, they can take the next step by looking to see if someone's already created a tool that uses the exploit. Now, weaponizing the exploit is the first thing most hackers do when they find a juicy exploit. So if you find one that's particularly severe, you can probably find a proof of concept available on GitHub or on the internet. That's all we have for this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you have any thoughts or feedback on the show, send me a message on Twitter, because I'd love to hear from you. We'll see you next time.